I'm Dennis Nunn. We're out here talking to Corey Oberlander today. Corey, I know you're from the Dakotas. Describe a little bit about your background and your business. What we do, Dennis, is I own a company called Ag Bears, and we are a progressive fertility program. What we do is manage fertility programs for growers in the upper Midwest. Uh, currently, we manage about 130-some thousand acres in four states. It is expanding with time. And uh, right now we've got some opportunities in, down in uh, Texas, some other areas. But what we do is we go out and we do the soil sampling, get all the analysis back. We like to use Midwest Labs. And then kind of starting with the seed furrow working backwards, we kind of build out a comprehensive fertility program for the growers. Okay, so fertility is your expertise in the soil uh, programs. Yep, that's what we do. Um, we're not really a full consulting service. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't go out and scout for insects, for bugs, disease, tell you what kind of seed to plant. Really, soils is what we do in precision okay. agriculture. Okay. So, yep. One of the things I've heard you talk a lot about is the need for early potash and sulfur being a challenge. Uh, and I know we've used a product for several years that we've made available to producers called Sidekick. And you've had some experience with that. Explain why potash and sulfur are so critical and especially why, I mean, a lot of these soils are so high in potash. Guys say, well, we don't need any potash in our pop-ups or yep. our pro programs. What, what do you tell them? Well, really what it comes down to is we're finding out more and more that early season potassium is needed in greater quantities than originally thought. The other thing is if you look at when the nutrient, when potassium is released from the soil, it's probably the last one that's being released. It's rather around 70 degrees probably. Most soils don't hit that till probably early to mid-June. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need some early on that's plant available, that's the key. The other thing is with sulfur is if you ever notice when we plant corn, get an early rain and your corn comes up and turns yellow on top, that's not nitrogen deficiency, that's sulfur deficiency. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is the soils have cooled down and now it's not releasing any plant available sulfur. So by having some sidekick in it, you can kind of alleviate both of those issues. Now I know there's a lot of companies that are coming out with products like Conklin Sidekick, uh, but in my experience, they're not all created equal. What, what do you see from the growers that you've worked with in terms of there's a lot of thiosulfate or there's a lot of uh, potassium sulfate products out there. Yep. What, what are you seeing? You know, I've used quite a few different brands and all of them are good, but there's really none that are great besides the Conklin product. And I can say that with confidence because we have used a few other companies and had moderate success, but we have had some stand loss with them if you get to a higher rate, okay? I like to replace, if a grower wants to use 1034-0 and is very adamant and not switching, I have them replace a gallon of 1034-0 with replace with a gallon of Sidekick or potassium thiosulfate. And with a few other companies, by using a gallon of that product, we have had significant stand loss when it's gotten dry out. Mm -hmm. And whenever we've used the Conklin product, uh, we've had zero issues with it. Mm -hmm. so. And some good yield response. Oh, absolutely. Um, got a few growers in the Red River Valley of North Dakota, Minnesota that have done this, and either even one down in South Dakota, and I can confidently say probably 11 to 18 bushel difference. Okay. Yep. That's amazing. Great information for the producer. Yep.